So I got my hands on a great little Mac Mini here. This is an M1 Mac Mini. Got a great deal on it. It's got some great specs. But before I make this my main computer here at home, I've got to add this to it. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be taking a look at this QuizLab USB-C hub with HDD and SSD enclosure. So let's see what this means. So obviously this is a hub that's designed to fit with this Mac Mini. We see the familiar silver design and the shape that matches this Mac Mini. So let's take a look at what this thing has going for it here and why I picked it up to try it out. So it's going to hook up with a USB-C to USB-C cable, so that's going to hook this whole dock up to the computer and then it's going to get power from a USB-C to USB-A cable and I read that this is important. It has to come from a USB-A cable. Now it can plug into the computer itself or it can plug into the wall with a normal USB-A charger. But what makes this thing special besides the extra ports that we're going to look at that, that happen on the front is it's actually got two slots here for both an NVMe M2, M.2 drive and a 2.5 inch drive, which can be an SSD or an HDD. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and take a look at how it works. All right, so in the box we have the actual hub itself right here. We'll take a look at that. We've got our USB-C to USB-C cable, and then we've got a USB-C to USB-A cable. And despite the picture, this is a lot longer than what it looked like on the picture. So it, this would allow you to get this thing remoted down to uh, you know, another charger if you wanted to. I'm going to try it out just right into the, the Mac Mini itself. If you can afford to have the extra port um, in the back there, then that's probably the best way to go. And then, of course, it came with a quick start guide. So let's take a look at some of the ports that this thing has. So on the back here, we can see it's got the computer host port. That's going to be the USB-C cable that hooks up to the computer. And then it's got the power supply port there, which lists 5 watts, 12 watts, 20 watts. So it looks like that's got to be a 5 volt adapter, and that's why they're using the, the USB-A end on the other end. So those are our two connectors in the back. And then on the front, we've got USB 3.0, two of those ports, a USB 3.1 Gen 2. So one of those ports, and it lists the uh, speeds there, 5 gigabits and then 10 gigabits, and then it's got a micro SD, an SD, and then a USB 3.1 Gen 2, another 10 gigabit port on the front. So that's nice, since you're going to be using one of your Thunderbolt ports in the back here, it gives you another one up front here to connect into. And it's right in the front, it's very handy if you've got like a thumb drive or something that you want to hook in, it's not real convenient to plug it into the back of the Mac Mini. So speaking of the Mac Mini, why do we need a, a hub like this? Well, this has two Thunderbolt 3 ports in the back. Those are the USB-C connectors, and it's got two USB-A connectors in the back. So it's better than nothing, but it's not as good as what it could be, and that's why you need something like this to give you a couple more inputs and outputs. Depending on what you're using for mouse and keyboard, if you're using uh, wireless, then you're, you're better off. But if you're using actual wired keyboard and mouse, that pretty much eliminates your two USB-A ports. And then if you have a thumb drive to plug in, you're, you're pretty much done. So this will add some functionality and some convenience factor for having all these USB-A ports in the front. And then, of course, the, uh, the micro SD, just in case you need to load something off your phone or off of a camcorder, camera, anything like that. Nice and convenient. So let's go ahead and hook this thing up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an NVMe drive and plug that in here. And then we'll get the whole thing hooked up and see what, what the drive looks like. All right, before we hook it up, I'm going to go ahead and flip this thing over and show you where the drives go. So just underneath here, a little plastic door. And inside here, you've got the 2.5 inch SATA adapter and then your NVMe adapter. And it looks like it's just got like one of those little rubber plug things to hold this down. And if you're going to be plugging in a 2.5 inch drive, the instructions don't really say what holds it in there. It shows you sliding it in. But I'm guessing maybe this would be the right size. I think I've got a drive right here. Let's go ahead and see. So let's just take this miscellaneous drive here and plug it in. And yeah, sure enough, these little spacers do keep it from moving backwards. So that works. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and skip that connector there because I've got a 2 terabyte Samsung 970 Evo Plus that I'm going to put into this NVMe slot here. So let me plug, take this little plug out. It looks like it's got the spacers for the all this, the sizes, the 40, the 80, all the important ones. So let's go ahead and slip that in there. Put the little plug back down. I think they could have just as easily put a little screw terminal there, but that would have been probably one of the only pieces of metal on this thing. All right, and then we're just going to close this guy back up. And we'll be ready to hook it up. Now I will mention that despite this thing looking like metal, it is mostly plastic. So it's got a very nice metallic feel to it, but I'm pretty sure this is simply just plastic. So let's grab our USB-C to USB-C cable and hook this thing up. Alright, so I got it hooked up here again with uh, getting the power off of the USB-A connector of the Mac Mini itself and then hooking in the host cable to the one of the Thunderbolt ports. Now it's important to to realize that this uh, hub here is not a Thunderbolt hub. It is a USB-C hub. Now it is hooked up over USB 3.1 Gen 2 so that is still pretty fast but it's not Thunderbolt. So that's important to know. So with that in mind we're going to go ahead and test out the speed of transferring stuff to and from this hub. Especially the drive that I just hooked up. So one thing I want to note before we start looking at the uh, the drive itself is there's really nothing grippy underneath this Mac Mini. So it's just slick plastic on the, the little the little black plate underneath. So this thing doesn't grip super nice <laughs> to the uh, you know to the top of this. So hopefully you get it set in place. You could get a little bit of uh, you know rubber or something like that, little rubber feet, and put it underneath there and it'll give it some grip. There was some rubber feet you may have seen on the bottom of the hub itself that had little plastic and once you peel that plastic off it will grip to your desk. But the, the Mac Mini itself does not look like it's got anything grippy on it by itself. So, so I'll have to take a look at that. So let's take a look at the drive that got installed and I already went into disk utility and went ahead and formatted this as a Mac OS extended so it, I just hit the erase button on it and formatted this thing out and it was super super quick formatting it so that was nice so now what I'm gonna do is I've got myself here a USB-C drive that's got an NVMe drive inside here and I've got a bunch of videos on here so I'm gonna plug this into the front I'm going to transfer some files onto the desktop and see how, how quick that goes. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing from the desktop to the internal drive here. So I'm going to get this thing plugged in. Alright, and that drive I just plugged in, this is going to be confusing, but it's also called NVMe. But here's a whole bunch of videos. So I'm going to grab one of these files and this one right here is 4.3 gigabytes. So let's go ahead and grab this, drag it onto the desktop, and see how quick it goes. In about five seconds. So that's pretty darn quick. So I'm happy with that. So that may not exactly be Thunderbolt speed, but that's quick enough for, for anything I would want to do. If I was going to be transferring a bunch of files, that speed would be quick enough. So let's go ahead and grab this other NVMe drive here. So this is the internal one. So we're going to be going from the internal drive of the Mac Mini, copying it onto and writing to the internal drive of the hub. And that's right about the same speed. So pretty darn close in speed. So I'm happy with both those transfers. If I was going to be using this uh, full time for video editing and stuff, then I don't have any problem with waiting, you know, 10 seconds for a video to, to copy over. So, so far so good. One thing that would concern me a tiny bit is the fact that this drive is only getting 5 volts from the Mac Mini. 
and probably a max of two amps. So I've got all these ports up front here that need to get powered. So whatever I plug into these things, I better be pretty cautious of what I plug in. If you're going to plug in a thumb drive or something like that, no big deal. An external drive like this, probably no big deal. If you plug in an external spinning drive, like a two and a half inch external USB hard drive, then those things need a decent amount of power. So I probably wouldn't keep one of those plugged in full time up here. Uh, maybe a webcam or a microphone or speakers or something like that would be fine, but nothing that requires a lot of power full time. You would probably want to save devices like that for the remaining USB-C connector or USB-A connector in the back there. And if you had too many of those things, like if I had a, a webcam and a microphone that I was going to have plugged in all the time, then I'd probably go ahead and take this 5 volt USB-A out, plug it into the wall, and then have my devices plugged right into the Mac Mini and save these up for just temporary things like thumb drives and memory cards. Alright, just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and try out a USB-A thumb drive and this port right here. So this is a USB 3.2 thumb drive. And don't even get me started on the naming conventions of these drives. It drives me crazy. But uh, I know that the, the read and write speed of this is going to be dependent more so on the drive itself, not so much on the interface. But I want to see how long it takes to read and write that same file onto this drive using one of the ports in front. So the far right port here is the one that's labeled USB 3.1. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Alright, so the Kingston drive has showed up here, and I did have to format it with disk utility, again because this thing defaulted to FAT32, and this file is too big for FAT32, so I went ahead and formatted it for Mac. And let's go ahead and drag this guy, guy on here. And this is going from the internal drive of the Mac to this thumb drive. So we can see why I like to use these NVMe drives going over the USB-C connector because in the same time that it copied the file over to here was the time that it took just to calculate how long it's going to take. So it says it's going to take seven minutes. I don't doubt it. So let me go ahead and let that write on there and then I'm going to see what the, re the read speed is in. Hopefully the read speed is a little bit better. Alright, so that did take every bit of that seven minutes it approximated. And now you see why I don't use thumb drives for backing up videos like that anymore. In fact, I made a video about not using thumb drives anymore. And uh, you can see that. I'll put a linky dink up here. So now let's go ahead and take this one and kill it off the hard drive. And let's drag this one back from the thumb drive to the Mac and see how long that takes. So that's more like it. So now you're seeing the speed difference between reading and writing to USB drives. And the read speed is a lot faster. And obviously writing onto the SSD that's built into this Mac is a lot faster. So now it looks like it's going to be about a minute to do the full copy. Still five seconds on the NVMe drive. So much nicer. So I'm going to definitely keep using this guy. Alright, so so far so good. I'm pretty happy with the speeds, especially the speed of the USB-C port here in the front. I'm happy that it's able to maintain that full speed even though it is going through one port on the computer and it's splitting between all these different ports here. Um, I'm not even going to test the uh, micro SD or the SD card because those things are slow just inherently not the fault of the hub that's just the, the fault of the technology. So like I said I'm very happy. Now these things like I said they go over USB-C which is going to hook into the Thunderbolt 3 port here, which is really what they call USB 4. So this same thing would work for the 2018, the 2020, or the M1, and then the newest one, the M2. They all have the same speed ports in the back, so you can use the same one. They also make a dark gray version of this, so if you do have the 2018 model, that would match the, the color scheme. I don't think it's an exact match, but it's going to be a lot closer. All right, so I think this thing is a keeper. It's going to allow me to keep the internal hard drive uh, from filling up too fast by dumping files over into the, the two terabytes that I've got in the bottom there. And it's going to give me the added convenience of all these ports in the front. 
So that's exactly what I was looking for and it's going to fit the bill. So if you want to check this thing out, I'll put a link in the description below. I found it on Amazon and uh, go check it out. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, I appreciate that thumbs up. Helps out the channel a lot. If you want to see more kind of geeky stuff, go ahead and find that subscribe button down here and give it a click. But thank you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.